वंस अपॉन अ टाइम लॉन्ग लॉन्ग ईयर्स अगो इन द डे वैन वन हैड टू बी केयरफुल अबाउट विच इज देर लिव्ड अ गुड मैन हुज यंग वाइफ डाइट लिविंग हिम अ बेबी गर्ल नाउ दिस गुड मैन फेल्ट ही कुड नॉट लुक आफ्टर द बेबी प्रॉपरली सो ही मैरिड अ यंग वूमेन हुज हजबेंड हैड डाइड लिविंग हर विद अ बेबी बॉय दस द टू चिल्ड्रन ग्रू अप टूगेदर एंड लव ईच अदर डेली डेली बट द बॉयज मदर वॉज एली अ विकेट विच वूमेन एंड सो चैलस दैट शी वॉन्टेड ऑल द बॉयज लव फॉर हर सेल्फ एंड वैन द गर्ल बेबी ग्रू वाइट एज मिल्क विद चीक्स लाइक रोजेज एंड लिप्स लाइक चेरीज एंड वन हर हेयर शाइनिंग लाइक गोल्डन सिल्क hung down to her feet so that her father and all the neighbors began to praise her look the stepmother fairly he he did her and did all in her power to spoil her looks she would set the child hard tasks and send her out in all weathers to do difficult messages and if they were not well performed would beat her and scold her cruelly now one cold winter evening when the snow was drifting fast and the wild rose tree in the garden under which the children used to play in summer was all brown and barren save for snowflake flowers the stepmother said to that little girl, Girl, child, go and buy me a bunch of candles at the grocer's. Here is some money. Go quickly and don't loiter by the way. So the little girl took the money and set off quickly through the snow. For already it was growing dark. Now there was such a wind blowing that it nearly blew her off her feet. And as she ran, her beautiful hair got all tangled and almost tripped her up. However, she got the candles, paid for them, and started home again. But this time the wind was behind her and blew all her beautiful golden hair in front of her like a cloud, so that she could not see her steps. and coming to the stile had had to stop and put down the bundle of candles in order to see how to get over it and when she was climbing it a big black dog came by the end and ran off with a bunch of candles now she was so afraid of her stepmother that she durst not go home but turned back and bought another bunch of candles at the groceries and when she arrived at the stile once more the same thing happened a big black dog came down the road and ran away with a bunch of candles so yet once again she turned back at the groceries through wind and snow and with her last penny bought yet another bunch of candles to no risk to no purpose for a last and a lack a day when she laid them down in order to part her beautiful golden hair and to see how to get over the stile a big black dog ran away with them so nothing was left save to go back to her stepmother in fear and trembling but for a wonder her stepmother did not seem very angry she only scolded her for being so late for see you her father and her little playmate had gone to their beds and were in the land of nod then she said to the child i must take the tangles out of your hair before you go to sleep come put your head on my lap so the little girl put her head on her stepmother's lap and lo and behold her beautiful yellow silk hair rolled right over the woman's knees and lay upon the ground then the beauty of it made the stepmother more jealous than before so she said i cannot part your hair properly on my knee fetch me a billet of wood so the little girl fetched one then said the stepmother your hair is so stick i cannot part it with a comb fetch me an ax so the child fetched an ax now said that wicked wicked woman lay your head down on the belt while i part your hair and the child did as she was bit without fear and lo the beautiful little golden head was off in a second by one blow of ax now the wicked stepmother had thought it all out of before so she took the poor little dead girl out to the garden dug a hollow in the snow under the rose tree and said to herself when spring comes and the snow melts if people find her bones they will say she lost her way and fell asleep in the snow but first because she was a wicked witch woman knowing spells and charms she took out the heart of the little girl and made it into two savoury pasties one for her husband's breakfast and one for the little boy's for thus would the love they be bore to the little girl become hers nevertheless she was mistaken for 
For when morning came and the little child could not be found, the father sent away his breakfast, barely tasted, and the little boy wept, so that he could not eat a thing. So they grieved and grieved, and when the snow melted and they found the bones of the poor child, they said she must have lost her way that dark night going to the ghost to buy candles. So they buried the bones under the children's rose tree, and every day the little boy sat there and wept and wept for his lost playmate. Now when summer came, the white rose tree flowered. It was covered with white roses the among the flower. There sat a beautiful white bird, and it sang and sang and sang like an angel out of heaven. But what it sang, the little boy could never make out, for he could hardly see for weeping, hardly hear for sobbing. So at last the beautiful white bird unfolded its broad white wings and flew to the cobbler's shop where a myrtle bush hung over the man and his last, on which he was making a dainty little pair of rose red shoes. Then it perched on a bow and sang over, sang ever so sweetly. Stepmother slew me, father nigh ate me, he whom I dearly love, sits blow, I sing above, stick, stalk, stone, dead. Sing that beautiful song again, said the cobbler, it is better than a nightingale's. That will I gladly, sang the bird, if you will give me the little rose red shoes you are making. And the cobbler gave them willingly, so the white bird sang its songs once more. Then with the rose that shoes in one foot it flew to an ash tray that grew close beside a goldsmith bench and sang. Stepmother slew me, father now ate me, he home sing above, stick, stalk, stone, dead. Oh, what a beautiful song, cried the goldsmith. Sing again, dear bird, it is sweeter than a nightingale's. That will I gladly you sang the bird if you will give me the gold chain you are making. And the goldsmith gave the bauble willingly, and the bird sang his song once more. Then with the rose red shoes in one foot and the golden chain in the other, the bird flew to an oak tree which overhung the mill stream, beside which three millers so were busy picking out a milestone and perching on a bow, sang his song ever so sweetly. My stepmother slew me, my father nay ate me, he whom I really love, sits below, I sing above, stick. Just then one of the millers put down his stool and listened. Stroke sang the bird, and the second miller put aside his stool and listened. Stone sang the bird. Then the third miller put aside his stool and listened. Dad sang the bird so sweetly that with one accord the millers looked up and cried with one voice. Oh, what a beautiful song, singing it again, dear bird, it is sweeter than a nightingale's. That will I gladly answer the bird if you will hang the milestone you are picking round my neck. So the millers hung it as they ever as they were asked, and when the song was finished, the bird spread its white, white wings, and with the milestone round its neck and the little rose that shoes in one foot, the golden chain in the other, it flew back to the rose tree. But the little playmate was not there. He was inside the house eating his dinner. Then the bird flew to the house and rattled the milestone about the eaves until the stepmother cried hearken how it thunders so the little boy ran out to see and down dropped the dainty rose red shoes at his feet see what fine things the th thunder has brought he cried with glee as he ran back then the white bird uttered the milestone about the eaves once more said once more and once again the stepmother said, Hearken, how can, how it thunders. So this time the father went out to see and down dropped the gold chain about his neck. It is true, he said, when he came back, the thunder does bring fine things. So one, then once more the white bird returned and milestone about the eaves. And this time the stepmother said hurriedly, Hark! There it is again. Perhaps it has got something for me. Then she ran out, but the moment she stepped outside the door, down fell a milestone right on her head and killed her. So that was an end of her, and after that the little boy was ever so much happier, and all the summer time he sat with his little rose-colored shoes under the wild rose tree and listened to the white bird song. 
But the when winter came and the wild rose tree was all barren and bare save for snowflakes flower, the white bird came no longer and the little boy grew tired of waiting for it. So one day he gave up altogether and they buried him under the rose tree beside his little playmate. Now when the spring came and the rose tree blossomed, the flowers were no longer white, they were edged with rose color like the little boy's shoes. And in the center of the, each blossom there was a beautiful tuft of golden silk like the little girl's hair. And if you look in the white rose you will find these things there still. Please subscribe for more stories. Thank you for watching.